Hello and welcome to Arirang News on this Thursday, October 27th. I'm Handan in Seoul. We'll begin with the expanding scandal centering around Choi Soon Shil, a confidant of President Park Geun-hye that's inflamed public anger in Korea. Choi has broken her silence for the first time and apologized for receiving documents from the nation's top office, but she denied most other claims. Kim Mo-gyeon starts our coverage. In an exclusive interview with local newspapers Hegeilbo on Wednesday, Choi soon shil confirmed that she'd received and edited dozens of presidential speeches despite holding no official post in the Park administration. Choi was interviewed in Germany where she's staying now with her daughter. She reportedly sobbed throughout the interview saying that she's so exhausted she could kill herself. She claimed she did not know the speeches passed to her during the early stages of the administration were confidential and that she did it to help President Park express her feelings more clearly. She apologized to the public for causing chaos in society and said sorry to President Park, claiming she only helped because of her loyalty and faithfulness to her friend. While she also admitted that she did receive reports from the presidential office right after President Park was elected, she denied allegations that such reporting from the top office continued to this day. Over claims that she received reports through a tablet PC, she said she doesn't own one, adding that she doesn't even know how to use such a device. She demanded a further investigation to look into how the device was acquired in the first place. Che also denied all allegations that she had meddled in appointing key government officials to interfere in state affairs. Regarding the corruption scandal surrounding cultural foundations Mir and K-Sports Foundations, she said she never received money from the foundations and that this could immediately be proven through an audit. Kim mo Arirang News. In related news, prosecutors have launched a special investigative team that will be solely dedicated to the growing allegations against President Park's confidant, Choi soon shil The Supreme Prosecutor's Office has named Seoul Central District Court Attorney Yi young yeol to lead the team that will consist of about 15 prosecutors. It has demanded a thorough and extensive probe into the case, but the investigation will be independent from the Ministry of Justice as well as the Presidential Office. The probe will focus primarily on whether Che had access to presidential documents and if so, what kind of punishment will follow. The investigation will also seek to determine whether both Che and the presidential office were involved in collecting millions of dollars in donations from major conglomerates to establish the controversial Mir and K Sports Foundations. It will also investigate whether Che funneled any of that money into her own private accounts. Turning now to the latest on Samsung Electronics, as widely anticipated, the Korean tech giant has given Lee Jae-yong a seat on its board of directors. The shareholders' meeting followed the third quarter earnings report, which has been hit hard by Samsung's botched Galaxy Note 7 recall, a fiasco that puts a little bit more onto the heir apparent's plate. Kim Min-ji reports. Further setting the ground for a corporate succession, shareholders of Samsung Electronics on Thursday approved the nomination of heir apparent Lee Jae-yong to join the company's board of directors. Speaking at the shareholders' meeting ahead of the vote, Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman Kwon oh yun said now is the right time to take on Lee as a board member to respond to rapidly changing business conditions and achieve continued growth. He didn't attend the meeting as it's customary for the person in question to not be present for a nomination vote. He will now be able to more actively participate and take formal responsibility for Samsung's business decisions. It also marks the first time in almost a decade that a founding family member will be held liable for any criminal and civil suits against the company. He's first task will be to steer the company through the Galaxy Note 7 debacle and repair Samsung's brand image with consumers. Much focus is also on whether he will work to shift the group's governance structure. On top of those challenges, activist U.S. hedge fund Elliott Management has been calling on Samsung Electronics to split into two publicly listed firms, a holding company and an operating company, as well as pay a special dividend to remedy the company's inefficient capital structure. While Samsung may eventually move towards shareholder-friendly policies, the first task is rehabilitating consumer sentiment. The Galaxy S8 will determine this. The company is under pressure to come up with an innovative product while also upgrading its safety. It's important for the heir apparent to show he can take responsibility for this. 
Experts add there is need for Samsung Electronics to streamline its business and reduce its dependence on its business arms, or it will lose out in the race for innovation. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. The vice foreign ministers of South Korea, the United States and Japan have been holding talks in Tokyo on North Korea's nuclear and missile threats and other issues of mutual interest. South Korean Vice Foreign Minister Im Sung-nam and his U.S. and Japanese counterparts Tony Blinken and Shinsuke Sugiyama were set to have discussed additional sanctions on Pyongyang with heightened tensions since the regime conducted its fifth nuclear test in September. The talks are the fifth of their kind since the first gathering held in Washington in April. April 2015. On Wednesday, Lim and Blinken, as well as Im and Sugiyama, held separate bilateral talks during which they agreed to work together to strengthen punitive measures on North Korea. That does it for now. I'll be back with more headlines at 4 p.m. Korea time. Stay with us.